Not necessarily, uh, but I question whether it's necessary. I mean, any regulation of the media threatens or at least affects freedom of speech to some degree, otherwise there wouldn't be any point in it. Um, so the question is, what degree of regulation is actually needed and how stringent should that be? And in my opinion, um, a statutory authority to regulate the media, which after all we've never had in the print media or not since, since the very early days of the colony, why on earth do we suddenly need it now? And nobody has satisfied me um, that there's a, a good reason for it. In fact, I would argue that the reason for having a statutory regulation of television and radio is disappearing because there's no longer a scarcity of spectrum which justified it in the first place. Well, simply because if that regulation is statutory or is backed as, for example, Mr Finkelstein recommended by the force of the courts, by the law, um, then you're handing over from editors and journalists the decision about what is fair and what is accurate to somebody else. Um, and and so, to, and, and so to some extent it's bound to, th to, to threaten freedom of speech. Now, as I say, some degree, some limitation on freedom of speech we all accept. We all accept the defamation laws. We all accept um, other, other good sound reasons for limiting to some degree our complete freedom of speech. Um, but, but once again, I've not seen any convincing reasons, uh, certainly not in the Finkelstein report or anywhere else, that says the Australian media is in such a bad state that it actually needs um, an outside authority to tell journalists what they can and can't say. What I found disturbing about that, I mean, I think a lot of people agree that the Discrimination Act um, is, uh, goes too far when it makes unlawful the giving of offence on any grounds. It happens, to, it happens to say that it's unlawful to give offence if what you say um, is about somebody's race or colour. Um, I don't think that should be unlawful. I don't think it should be unlawful to make it uh, to be offensive about people's religion or anything else. Offence is not, uh, uh, it should not be against the law. Um, hate speech is another matter altogether if you're inciting violence. Uh, but that's not what the Act says. Now, in this particular case, there, I mean, there is, in the, however, in the, in the Discrimination Act, um, the Anti-Discrimination Act, a proviso that says if it's your genuine opinion, um, that's okay. So it's, it's attempting to protect freedom of speech in the same way as the, the defamation laws do. But the judge in that case said, even if Andrew Bolt had got everything right, which he clearly didn't, but if he got his facts right, merely because of the way that he expressed his personal views, which I think he sincerely held, um, that was enough for him to step over the line uh, because he was talking about these matters of race. Now, I just don't think that's... I think it's disturbing to have an act that says there's one bit of our lives where you can't express your pungent opinion uh, without, without uh, bit breaking the law. Um, I think it's less bad. And I think it's less bad primarily because, especially in newspapers, um, and that's because we don't have the same ferocious competition that they have in the UK. The UK is a national market. You have eight or nine national newspapers vying for the readers. Uh, now, obviously, some are up market and some are down market, some are populist, some are less so. So they're not all going for the same readers, but three or four newspapers on every day are trying to get the same sort of audience. And that produces this hothouse of competition that's always existed in Fleet Street. Um, we don't have that situation here. Obviously, the popular papers on the whole tend to have the market to themselves. Even in Sydney and Melbourne, where you've got two newspapers, there's a big differentiation between the sort of audiences that they're going for. Where you do find similar kind of problems in the journalism, I think, is where we do have that ferocious competition, which is in tabloid television between seven and nine, who are going for exactly the same audience on exactly the same time of day, every single day. And it's no coincidence that that's where you tend to find the most dubious journalistic practice.